What's been your worst experience at the gynecologist? My gynecologist's hand was already inside of me when he exclaimed, wait, I know where I recognize you from. He realized that I was a waitress at the breakfast spot he went to with his family every week. Never came in after that. I told this story once before on here, but my regular was on maternity leave, so they asked if I was okay with a male OBGYN filling in. I said sure. They asked if it was okay if a resident sat in. I said sure. Well, I forgot that a lot of medical residents are guys my age. So in walks my gyno followed by a guy my age who was there just to watch. I feel a little awkward about this, but my parents are both doctors so I remind myself that it's all clinical and professional. Then the doctor examining me says, Confetti Candy? Are you Dr. Confetta Candy's daughter? Turns out they're golf buddies. So he proceeds to ask me about how my dad is doing while I'm being examined and meanwhile this guy my age is just silently standing there observing. All in all a really awkward experience. I had something kind of similar happen when I had my LEAP procedure done. They asked me if it would be okay for a male resident to come in and assist and I said sure. In walks the most gorgeous young doctor I have ever seen and he starts touching my lady parts and I couldn't help but get turned on. I immediately start thinking about the most sad and disgusting things to get my mind off of what's going on and prayed he wasn't able to tell. OMFG the gyno was great but her CNA, holy bad bedside manner, Batman. There was something abnormal on my pap smear, turned out to be nothing to worry about. However, that's not what the CNA said when she was checking my vitals before the gyno came in to talk. Nope, the CNA said, so apparently your test results were crazy. Excuse me, what? On the phone she just said there were some abnormal cells. Yeah you have 14 different strains of HPV. What? Cue all the terrible thoughts and anxiety and anger and questioning my trust in my relationships turns out she misunderstood and they tested for 14 strains, I didn't have them. What? The? Bleep? I was about 21, I developed IC and it hadn't been diagnosed correctly, essentially it felt like I had a never-ending, at least once a month UTI, so I had to see doctors quite often before I found the right doctor and diagnosis. I saw an OBGYN in my hometown for these symptoms and it was the first time with this woman because my regular doctor was on vacation. Before examining me or even asking much about me besides why I was there she said, once you settle down with a husband and stop sleeping around you'll stop having these problems. I had had one partner at that point and it had been years ago since we had been together and I had been tested for everything a few times already, due to my ongoing symptoms. I never got a chance to tell her, nor did she care. She did her exam, scribbled a script for some antibiotics and could not have given less f's about me as a person. I drove straight to my mom's office and lay on her floor and sobbed for a really long time. I had never been so insulted, hurt, embarrassed by a doctor before. Thankfully it was a small office and everyone was really kind to me there. I don't know how I could have sat alone with those raw feelings right then. This is very close to my experience. I had just lost my virginity at 19 to my boyfriend. We had discussed previous partners and when he was last tested. I did everything by the book because it was such a huge step for me. Itching develops. I'm 90% sure it's a yeast infection, had them before from soaps, and try to get an appointment. Before the date, the burning gets so bad I go to Emerg care so I can be seen faster. My mother has to tag along and as an unwanted shadow, narc, enough said. The doctor walks in and asks if I've had a pap before. No. Are you sexually active? My eyes tried to scream, not in front of my mom, as she wasn't aware yet. The doctor ignored it and repeated the question. Yes, just recently. How many partners have you had in the last six months? Just one. Meanwhile, my mother has been glaring daggers at me. You're getting a pap. She tells me where to put my legs. I start shaking, embarrassed my mother is still there, as well as a nurse, and I feel judgment radiating from the doctor during it all. I was nervous and had my knees together in the stirrups and my hand pushing the gown over my privates while she prepared, since she wasn't needed down there yet. She turns around and yanks my legs apart and tells me to keep them there. Double shaking now. 
She explains she's not sure the instrument she has will fit, it may be too big, but she wants to try before hunting down a smaller one. It didn't fit. It took me crying out several times before she pulled it out, grumbling. Her whole demeanor screamed you're annoying. I had tears welling up from the humiliation. The doctor leaves the room and returns with the proper instrument. After painful jabbing and scraping, she pulls out and yanks it all with her. Well, looks like you have chlamydia. My heart stops. What? This is what happens when you sleep with someone without being responsible. Next time, ask about their history before having sex and maybe you can avoid this. Actions have consequences. Then she strolls out. The nurse overseeing looked horrified and offered me apologies. My results would come soon. I leave in sobs. The boy I loved, the first one I've trusted to treat me right. The one I gave myself to, and he gave me chlamydia? So he either lied about being tested or cheated. I went home and sobbed until I fell asleep. I was heartbroken. The next day I was rewarded with a dressing down from my mother for lying to her, and a lengthy phone call with the boy who may have betrayed me. He pleads with me to believe him but says he understands if I need the results before I can trust him again. And it was a bleeping yeast infection. Results came back. Nothing more. They kept insisting I had an STD and tested me for the same thing three times because I was a college student. When I told them I didn't want to be tested again, they said they wouldn't treat me anymore. At no point did they address the actual issue I came in for I'd been bleeding for two months straight, hence my visit to the gyno. When the doctor started my exam, she was pissed because she thought I came in on my period. Obtious look why she didn't bother to read my chart or ask why I was there. One of my first visits to the OBGYN was when I was a teenager. My mom took me because I wasn't having regular periods. So the doc talks to me and my mom and asks me all sorts of questions. Then she has my mom leave the room and asks me the questions again. Which I get. Some kids don't share certain things with their parents. But when she asked me if I was sexually active, I said no. And she goes, no? When do you think that will happen? Uh, I have no idea. I was 17. It wasn't like I was in a hurry. Well, you need to get on that. It was like she was looking down on me because I wasn't having sex yet. What the hell, lady? It just made me immediately dislike her. And feel super uncomfortable. Uh, I had a therapist tell my fat very low self-confidence unkissed 21-year-old self that a healthy sex life was important to mental well-being. Not entirely helpful. I was also 17 and when they asked me if I was sexually active and I said yes, they were like, do you go to church? Do you believe in God? Why not? Like I'm not here to talk about my religious affiliations. I'm here to talk about my health. What those two have to do with each other, I haven't a clue. Never saw them again after that. Opposite experience. I was 17 and I said no to the sexually active question and the response was, good you better not be and said to save sex for marriage. The time one decided he was going to cure my vulvodynia on the fly by forcing the penis Y ultrasound probe into me and pressing around, and then after that sticking his fingers in and massaging the tense muscles. I was so overwhelmed by pain I could hardly tell him to stop, and he said he wasn't going to stop until I learned to relax. I was there for birth control pills. I had a friend how almost had the identical experience at a male practitioner. He massaged her clit as he pressed around as well. It was a small town and so it happens a lot of my girlfriends and also myself have been at his practice to have an cervical exam performed when our own doctor was on holiday. My experience wasn't as bad as hers or yours, but it still is today the most humiliating experience I ever had in my life. I could never pin down what exactly made me feel so violated as I walk out of his office. I think this also stems from mindset you are in as you walk in. I always thought you could completely trust a doctor did what was best for you when I was younger. These people have taken oaths to do no harm for God's sake. It's weird. I feel like something bad happened in that room. The way his eyes lit up when I proceed to tell him why I was there. The way he gestured me to take my pants off. The tone he asked me in if I was active. The way he preformed the exam was just enough to just wonder if it was normal. 
but it wasn't enough to file a complaint. He got convicted a couple of years later by multiple women who came forward but only after one girl got the courage to push charges. I often wonder how many girls he under-violated, if you know what I mean. Just enough to make you wonder if it was all in your head but enough to make you curl up on the floor and cry your eyeballs out. I love to reach out one day to that girl who came forward. To tell her her actions surely saved many young girls from thinking a normal gyno exam is supposed to be humiliating and horrific. You are a hero to all of us. Edit, spelling. When I was about 20, went in for a pelvic exam since I was having issues with ovarian cysts. The lady lubes up her hands, looks me in the eyes, and then missed she got the thigh joint area I just looked away. I think we were both really embarrassed. This isn't about my gynecologist, but a nurse practitioner taking my routine smear test. It's also more funny than horrifying. Routine screening starts at 25 in the UK and, unless abnormalities are seen, are done every three years. I had had abnormalities on my first smear so I racked up more cervical inspections than most it's all fine now and therefore was completely comfortable in knowing what to expect from the experience by the time I turned 31. So when the nurse practitioner was taking absolutely ages about it I started getting slightly uncomfortable and curious. She was re-angling lights as she stared into my fanny, trying a variety of different speculums. Eventually she called in a colleague and they whispered and prodded down by my spotlit genitals as I got more and more concerned until the original nurse stood up and quietly addressed me. I was informed that my ass was too small to be creating the normal angle for investigating the cervix, and please would I ball my fists under my bum cheeks to create a clearer visual passage for them. I meekly complied. But, I mean, I always knew I had the world's flattest ass, but now I had it medically confirmed just how insubstantial it was. Another story concerns the gynecologist that saw me when I was dealing with the aforementioned abnormalities. He was an eminent and respected man of his field and had been around long enough that my mother had been his patient before having children and for a while after. He had been around during her pregnancy with me, my birth a trimester early, and all the drama that accompanied it. I have a bit of a problem with not thinking before I speak, so when I was leaving and he told me how much I looked like my mum, I couldn't stop myself from asking, which end? To his credit, he just laughed and saw me out the door.